Now, though these videos don't generally perform well, it looks like the scoring videos are actually appreciated. And I'll be honest with you, I actually really like making them. So if you wanna try to gain some insight into your Oscar charts, these videos really help with that. And you'll see why in the video, I will make some comparisons to Oscar as well as a regular sleep study. So let's go ahead and get on with the video. Tell you right now, I'm a little pissed because I just recorded this and I noticed I wasn't recording the screen. So everything that was amazing is lost. It's all lost. So we're gonna redo it. Slightly more bitter. Oh, Jocelyn, you shouldn't be bitter. Shut up. I also have an appointment coming up, so I have very little time to get this done. But I do wanna show this to you. Uh, one, this is a sleep study. I actually hooked the person up. One of my friends hooked them up. I asked him if I could use this data because it's really cool. There's tons of opportunities for learning in here. So I do want to share it with you. These videos don't tend to get a lot of views. So please, please give it a thumbs up and tell all your friends. It'll have a lot of inf information. I'll probably clickbait the title though. Sorry about that. This is for people who are uh, sleep techs and they want to just learn how to score better. By the way, I'm a freaking phenomenal scorer. Inner score reliability, I'll show you my scores. They're phenomenal. Usually you have a global average and I kick ass. I, I, I blow it away. One thing is sleep staging. I'm, I'm always a little lower than, but I'll show you that in a second because there's actually one to start off. Okay, so they're awake right here. All this stuff is awake. They're awake, they're awake. This is alpha sleep. So alpha, not alpha sleep. This is alpha waves. It's eight to 12 cycles per second or eight to 13 cycles per second. Basically, it means eyes are closed, but they're still awake. So, you know what? Let me get this actually on the right there. Now it's centered. Okay, so still awake, but it's starting to look a little drifty over here on this other side. This has been a shift in EEG. It is now mixed voltage, or I'm sorry, mixed frequency, low voltage, which is close to stage one, and slow rolling eye movements. This is stage one right here. We have a brief period of alpha activity right there, but this side is stage one. This side is stage one. I screwed up. I made a boo-boo. My bad. So now we have stage one. Uh, Mixed frequency, low voltage, slow rolling eye movements, slow rolling eye movements, stage one. We get over here, stage two. Why? Because there is a K complex right there. K complex or a little caterpillar looking thing, which is a uh, sleep spindle that would qualify it to become stage two. We have a sleep spindle, we're good. We're all good. Okay, this is the first thing I wanna stop, collaborate and listen, just kidding. This is the first thing I wanna, I wanna show you. And that's Arira. So, if I were to shift this to a two minute window, we can see it a little bit better. So what we have is a decrease in the airflow, the breathing. Let me, let me go over those real quick. These top two here, eyes, eye. We have the chin. These four are EEG, meaning your brain activity. We have legs, leg movements. We have snoring right here. You can see them on the side. We have flow, which is breathing. So if you're using Oscar, that's the only signal you really see. We have abdominal and thoracic effort, which is the chest and stomach belt. We have uh, EKG, which we have a lot of uh, PACs going on here, PACs and PVCs, hello. Then we have SpO2, blood oxygen desaturation. All right, that's this is the important part. I mentioned these a lot, upper airway resistance syndrome and like AHI sucks, RDI, whatever, uh, those uh, ring, those little ring things, the well you rings are freaking worthless, by the way. And here's why. You can have periods where there's, and you're going to see this in here, where there's awakenings from sleep disorder breathing events, but there's really no blood oxygen desaturation to speak of. This is one of them. We have a drop from 30, uh, from 93% down to 90%. It's only, well, barely, barely that. It's really the 91%. And we have Decrease in airflow, so you can see the really the flattening on the tops of these, gasping awake, you see the shift in EEG, definitely awake. This does not meet the criteria for a hypopnea though. So it would be called nothing. This would be called a spontaneous arousal. But because I flag Rira's, it is something, it's gonna to count to the, towards the overall thing. And then if they need, I mean, this is obviously a breathing problem, right? So if you inflate this with CPAP, regardless of how, oh, but it's just a Rira, it really disrupts sleep a lot, as you can see right there. That's all I wanna say about it. I'll stop beating the dead horse. But as we move on, what, what's the difference between this one and this one? This one's now a hypopnea. Actually, the arousal lasts for less time, which really doesn't matter, they woke up. But now we have a blood oxygen desaturation of 5%. So now it's magically a hypopnea, even though it's just as disruptive. Yeah, I don't know, make that make sense. Now this one, there is a, this is interesting, we have a lot of good stuff. This is a desaturation. 
and that is of 4%. But there's no decrease in airflow of 30% or more to make it a hypopnea. There's no awakening, if I wanted to call it a rare, so it's nothing. We just have snoring. Until over here, we do have a quick burst of EEG activity. We have a rira, we have increased snoring, uh, blood oxygen desaturation of 2%, moving right along. No awakening, but we do have a decrease in breathing of 30% or more and a desaturation, therefore hypopnea. Lots of little rules in here, guys. Lots of little rules. So I'm gonna go ahead and move a lot faster because I just really wanna show you a few things. Oh, let's go back to this one. That. Oh my God, Jason, you missed it. They're not breathing. That's an obstructive apnea. Uh, no loser, it's not. Because it is only like 7.9 seconds. That's not enough to be an obstructive apnea. There's also no awakening. We do have a blood, a blood oxygen desaturation of 3% or more, which obstructive apneas technically don't need one, but it's not long enough and it doesn't wake them up. So guess what? It doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and move faster. I wanna get up to Delta sleep, stage three sleep. So do you see these massive um, delta waves? They're not enough. It has to be like 20% of the page, which is like six seconds worth of delta activity. You're gonna see a little shift here. Just ignore that, ignore what you just saw. So look at this. All of a sudden we have these massive slow waves. This is delta sleep. This is something that people with fibromyalgia, they have alpha intrusion in it. It's like disruptive, but stage three sleep is thought to be, let me go ahead and I'm gonna shift this to 30 seconds so you can see a little better. Well, let's go ahead and go boom, center it, because ADHD again. Look at these big slow wave sleeps. There's no alpha intrusion. This is just regular delta sleep. Nice and slow. So this is where uh, like musculoskeletal uh, systems are repaired. Hence the link to fibromyalgia, why they always feel so achy and bones and uh, everything hurts. Uh, they're, they have uh, messed up delta sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this again to two minutes and we're gonna cruise along. Now the interesting thing is during delta sleep, uh, oddly, oftentimes sleep disorder breathing goes away. Kind of a curious thing. Even if you're like really severe on your back, if you're on your back in delta, it doesn't look so bad. But then you go into stage two or REM and it's like horrid. Okay, so this is interesting. We have an awakening. I didn't actually didn't flag it, my bad. Um, this I should have flagged as an awakening because, but there's no real, there's no real like decrease in airflow that's like stands out from the background. Nothing real obvious. Now, all the tops of these waves are super flat. So if they had CPAP on, it would probably be a lot better. It'd be more rounded. Probably this arousal wouldn't happen, but it did happen. But all of it just looks the same. So there's no decrease in airflow. There's no blood oxygen desaturation other than 1% that would be waking them up. But yet they did wake up right there. So kind of an interesting thing. All right, now we have REM. Okay, so I, well, let's do this. Let's do this. So look at the, the waves. You have the eyes that are kind of uh, synchronous somewhat. Kind of more picking up like EEG. And then you have like the breathing is pretty flat. And then all of a sudden we see this transition where now all of a sudden the eyes are asynchronous. They're kind of doing the exact opposite of each other. And the EEG has toned down a lot. It's really flattened out. Now let's get kind of deep into this. Now you see some more sharp eye movements, like really sharp, and they're rapid, ha <laughs> hem hem, rapid eye movement. By the way guys, do me a favor and like the video. These don't get a lot of views. Um, they're really fun to make. This is like, I love diagnostics. That's. I love diagnostics. It's like a little puzzle seeing what's going on. But let's see, let's do this. If I expand out to respiratory, you see how there's like this slow rolling pattern here for the breathing? But yet we haven't seen any awakenings. There is one over here. We haven't gotten to that yet. But there's a slow rolling pattern that's normal during REM breathing. So it's gonna be look, look like stuff like this. You might have a lot of snor louder or higher snores. Doesn't mean they necessarily woke up there. You'll see blood oxygen desaturations doesn't necessarily mean there was any like real cause for it other than normal REM breathing. I'm not gonna lie, I think the other video was a lot better. Okay, so here's the one I didn't record. <clears throat> so here's another RERA. So it comes up to a sharp point. We see a clear decrease in breathing, as far as breathing effort, the amplitude of it. But we only see an oxygen desaturation of 4%. It goes from 94 to 92, but we see a definite change, there's a definite shift here in the EEG. So there's definitely an awakening and we had building snores leading up to it. Rira.
Okay, now I want to show you something really cool. So he's on this dude's been on his right side forever. Okay, so there's no reason for this awakening. All the tops of these waves look really pretty good. And then we have an awakening. So nothing happened, but all of a sudden we have all this crap that starts to happen. This is what people call sleep wake junk. So technically, they call it sleep wake junk because they're right. There's sleep in here, but there's more wake in here. So the, the they're flagged as being wake. It's kind of arbitrary, but if it's you know 15% or more, it's gonna be flagged as that, which is wake. But if we zoom out and we're looking at it from like a perspective of Oscar, we're looking at this little section right here, it looks terrible. And your machines, your CPAP devices or bi-level are flagging these as, as like obstructive apneas, central apneas, obstructive hypopneas, but it's really just this sleep-wake junk. So largely pretty much just if you see an awakening, something that looks odd, just really kind of ignore everything after that. You're gonna be a lot better off not panicking. So, by the way, a lot of nuance to that. Uh, if you'd like, hit me up, axgsleepdiagnostics.com. I'll go over this stuff with you on your personal data. Okay, so sleep-wake junk has been handled. But here's what I wanted to focus on. So they're on their side for a lot of this, and there was really nothing. Now they're on their back, and now all of a sudden we see a ton of obstructive events that are increasing in severity. Still causing awakenings, the difference being they're now categorized as hypopneas because we have a bigger oxygen desaturation. Literally the only difference. We're still before on their side, we're still seeing disruption. It's just it was to a lesser degree, so it would be it would be seen as less severe if you're going by Medicare standards. Okay, I want to try to keep this video short, so let me zoom ahead faster. So all on their back, much worse. And then like much worse, obstructive hypopnea, obstructive apnea. First one we've seen big flat line, big massive awakening, big snorts, gasping awake. Uh, blood oxygen desaturations of like 8% right here, the thickums, and then they're on their side, and then everything looks good again, snoring decreases, breathing looks better, arousals much less, into delta sleep, slow wave sleep. Kind of interesting stuff here. So let's go ahead and move forward to this. So we have more REM. Let's check out that transition again. The transitions are always kind of interesting. Let me show you something else here. So stage two, stage three mixed kind of back and forth between stage two, stage three. Watch how it flattens out. All of this really starts to attenuate, gets flat. We have a random arousal. What? A lot of you have done PAP analysis with, like right before REM sleep. You'll just see this random arousal. This massive, I'll zoom out again. You see this big, weird looking thing and it's like, what the hell happened there? I don't know why, but always before REM, Looks like my video window just cut out, but always before REM, you'll see this massive, like this little awakening. Yeah, there's really no reason for it, but this is all REM breathing over here. So let's go back to that and we'll keep progressing. REM, big massive eye movements, rapid eye movements. Right there, technically, this is a big central apnea. I don't ever really score those in REM because these are natural parts of REM breathing, you'll see these transient central apneas. Yeah, I probably should have scored it, but anytime you score them, all of a sudden everyone's like, oh my God, they have central apneas, what's central apneas? Most doctors know, like sleep doctors, that like you're gonna have transient central apneas in REM, and they usually tell you like, dude, just, just don't score them, because otherwise everyone freaks out, and this is why. There's really nothing to be seen. Yes, you're gonna have a blood oxygen desaturation because of them, but really in the scope of things, if I zoom out again, it's like one in a sea of nothingness. So it's really nothing to worry about. Trust me, this is what they look like. Then we have another awakening for really no apparent reason and on to wake. So unfortunately, my memory card filled up on my, uh, on my camera here. You can see the blinking light, but hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully it shed some light on some of your Oscar data or if you're a sleep tech, hopefully it gave you a little more confidence in scoring. Um, look at the whole picture. You want to look at snoring. You want to look at blood oxygen desaturations, breathing, effort, EEG. All of that stuff is very important. Um, having nice, clean signals to look at is obviously always important. That's all I've got for you. Please check out the sponsor of this video, CPAPsupplies.com. If you want to have a PAP analysis with me, AXGSleepDiagnostics.com. I want to thank all the Patreon supporters, YouTube members. You guys are fantastic. Uh, but really, really thank you for watching this what can only be described as a shitter video. Thank you. Bye. Clean your stinky mask with some mask right available at Amazon. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick, <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, 
Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Chu Chen, Edward Steiner, Erin Stevenson, Deborah Permute, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks, buddy, to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and other stuff. <laughs>